Okay, Patrick McCabe here with a little explanation on my Pong Arduino code. Um, first off, this might be a little weird because um, <clears throat> the orientation of the screen, I call... Uh, when I program, I looked at it like this. And um, so I called this the top and this the bottom, even though when you play it, you have left and right. Um, because this is where the paddles move back and forth. So that's uh, first off what I kind of want to tell you. And I'm just going to dive on in. So um, the whole game, I guess, board is represented by an array in the code. And that array is made up of bytes. And each contains 8 bits. So that array would just go right on top like so. You can see I just did the first two lines, but of course, well, four. Um, but of course there's a whole array that uh, stores all of the board. So in this array, um, there are just a few things that it stores. It's going to store um, the, the paddle. So it's going to store the location of the three bits. In this case, there's two modes. You can have a, a three-bit wide paddle or a two-bit wide paddle. And um, it's going to store that, and it's going to store where the ball is. Now, um, the paddles, uh, of course, the location of the paddle is determined by how you are spinning the physical controller. So that value, that analog value, it gets mapped to, in between 0 and 13. And um, 0 to 7 will represent one side because this is obviously this is made up of multiple matrices and um, and then 8 to 13 will represent the other side so that value gets mapped and there's a I'm going to be talking a lot more about this but where the matrices meet there's obviously a problem because um, it's really easy to work within a single matrix because uh, or matrix should I say uh, these values, these bits, you can just add one or subtract one, and you can uh, you can display the paddle. But here, of course, this is this is bit zero uh, for the first row, or for the first index, and uh, this is bit seven for the uh, second index. So, of course, if if the paddle, if the center of the paddle is here. Then one's going, one LED is going to be lit up on the uh, matrix here and one over here. So that's one thing the code has to look for. Um, and there's a lot more like that, which I'll be getting into. And uh, so the ball movement. Now there's a few things with this. I guess first I'll start off with how the ball originates. Uh, the well, there's a few movements for the ball. So it can be moving uh, what I call the Y direction because, like I said, I programmed it looking as if it was like this. So I call this, uh, I have direction Y. And when it equals zero, the ball is moving um, from the bottom to the top. And when it equal, equals one, it's moving from the top to the bottom, uh, you know, towards the opposite players. And... Um, then we have a uh, left to right and right to left movement because the ball of course is traveling at an angled path. So if it's moving this direction, it's moving from right to left. And it's moving this direction, it's moving from left to right. So that is also stored in the code. So you have to know um, which direction this way and uh, this way you're moving. So at the beginning of each game, uh, it randomly generates which direction it's going to be moving in, um, uh, which uh, direction this way it's going to be moving in, and uh, there's a there's a few lines here where it can randomly choose a line depending on which way it's moving. If it's moving this way, the lines are towards the back, and if it's moving this way, the lines are over here. That, that gives uh, the player more time to react at the beginning of each game. And then it chooses a random bit on that line and um, can simply just start playing there. So when the ball is moving around, there's uh, 
basically, like I said, a few things it keeps track of, all those directions, and then all it really cares about is which line it's on. So it doesn't really need to know where on the line it's at. I'll show you. Let's say it's over here. Uh, it just needs to know which line it's at because all it does is bit shift. Um, depending if it's moving from left to right, it's going to bit shift that right. So um, because it's moving left to right, and then in order to get it to the next row above it, in, c in this case the uh, direction y is zero. In order to get to move um, closer to the player, it simply subtracts. It subtracts one, two. So it subtracts two rows, and it's able to uh, move towards the player as it bit shifts over. And of course, there's a few things. Sometimes it runs into the edge. So in this case, it does pay attention to which ball the bit is on. If the ball is on an even row for the array, because the first posi position in the array is 0, the second one is 1, and then here's 2, 3, and so on. So this side is odd and this side's even. So if it's on an odd uh, line and it's at the ball is at bit, um, bit 0, then it knows it's run into a wall. And in that case, it has to deflect what I call deflect off the wall. And all it has to do there is basically um, shift the direction because if it's moving uh, left to right and it runs into the wall it changes to move right to left so it simply changes that and the uh, the rest of the pong um, what I call pong simulator function takes over and one more thing uh, it kinda has to deal with is when it crosses over so yeah that kinda sounds like biology stuff but no when it crosses over it um, you go from normally you uh, let's say you're oops let's say you're moving this way to progress towards the opposite side or towards this side um, it has to add two to the index so if you're at this row you add one two and you're at the next one well let's say you have you're right here and that's <clears throat> at the edge of the screen well edge of the matrix well, now you have to add one, two, three. So that's what I call crossing over. And um, it simply just has to add three instead of two. So uh, things get a little bit different though when the ball reaches the end, uh, near the end where the paddles are. You have to determine if the player has actually struck the ball, if the player missed and, uh, and then score the points. And there are some special places where uh, things like crossing over and deflecting go on. So let's just take this side for instance. <clears throat> uh, the ball, the paddle of course would be moving back here. And um, the ball would be coming in. So if, if there's a, we'll just uh, act like there's always a paddle about to hit the ball. Uh, there's... Uh, a few cases where it's easy deflection. So if it's coming in at a path, it can simply, uh, where it strikes, which um, I wish this was easier to show you. Where it strikes. So if it's coming in, we'll say those three right here, right there, it deflects off with these. So there's some places where it's easy. <clears throat> Actually, sorry. If it's coming in right here, we can we consider that it hits this one and the flex off like that. So there's your V. So this is the point of contact with the paddle if the paddle was there. So in that case, all you do is switch the direction that's moving. You switch the uh, Y direction and you switch... Um, Actually, no, you just switch to Y direction because it's moving from left to right and switch to Y direction it continues to move from left to right. Um, and then there's a crossing over, like I said, that was a normal case. Here's a problem case. So it comes bouncing in like before, bounces off of this, 
and now it has to cross over before it can continue. So there's uh, that point of contact it looks for there and of course over here. Um, so there's two spots depending on which direction is coming in that it has to look for so it um, properly crosses over. And then there's um, some deflection areas which are over here. So <clears throat> There's a case, well let me start with just the co corner case. If it's coming directly in on the corner, so it would make contact with this corner, if the paddle was there, it bounces directly out the same path it came in. Because you roll a ball in the corner and it's going to come back at you the same way you rolled it in. So in that case, you switch the Y direction because now you're heading towards the other player and you switch the left or right direction so it was coming from right to left and now it's moving left to right and um, then one more case is when uh, it comes in bounces off the wall first right there so it's coming in bounces off the wall then hits the paddle and bounces back out right here so bounces in hits the wall it's the paddle bounces out. So, of course, it doesn't really take care of that. So, simply uh, what the code does is it knows is it's at this um, seventh bit right here on this row. And um, it shifts it over uh, twice to here. And then it continues. Uh, it switches the Y direction, switches the um, left or right direction, and the ball continues on its way. And that's basically how um, how the game works. So I don't think I have anything else to tell you. Uh, I have the code, of course. I will. Uh, you can read it. I there are few comments in it right now. I might add more. I might not. So uh, see you later.